what I'm seeing, you know, through my research of the past, present, and mod- and today, 2020, is that mankind may have reached a pinnacle in the, like, 1950s. Post-World War II America, people were afforded to have homes, cars, majority of children born right then had a father who worked and a mother who stayed at home and that created good results good in the in the in the form that there was a baby boom and people were not struggling with just survival what it created was a lot of people who thought hey it's not hard it's easy look at me i worked every day and blah 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 and now i can afford vacations and I have a pension, and you know, life wasn't that hard. So they have a, a outlook on life, those people, that a lot of people who are younger than them say, no, we've been, we've been hit by plagues, dude. We've been hit by COVID now. Even before COVID, the problems were just snowballing in our, in our society in America. With fatherlessness being probably the major thing to look at broken homes um, you know suicide rates uh, incarceration you have all these all these things that are just red flags and that will not be addressed and the fact that they can't be addressed or solved shows me that it's on purpose these problems were created probably on purpose and are not being addressed on purpose so then you say to yourself, well, why would uh, people allow millions of people in their own country, let, let alone the world, in America to suffer, for children to suffer, for obnoxious, the highest rate of poverty and, you know, the highest rate of fatherlessness, it's almost as if it's, it's the devil at the wheel, and he's trying to kill as many good things in the human being society as he can like a stable family or a good community people are growing up in a in a toxic environment in a wasteland of drugs in a wasteland of you know political turmoil and corruption to where it's like only few survive i've known so many people so many young people who died who fallen by the wayside it's it i've lost count of friends you know and then you go you go live in your life where all your friends are in prison or the majority are dead and then there's a couple that had mothers and fathers and were able to do okay majority of the ones that are still with us are working at gas stations or you know, maybe they're doing good. They're considered doing good if they're working at Jiffy Lou, or they're not making minimum wage. That's how sad it's gotten. I mean, people are going to these clinics to give blood for cash because that's how bad people are hurting or selling their blood. I mean, it's just, it's just. I could sit here and tell you they're purposely killing people. I could sit here and name every problem. But everybody already knows it. It's evident. It's 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 apparent. People are struggling. And is it genocide? Is it slow genocide? You see millions of uh, you see America spending billions on uh, weapons of war that go and bomb people that barely just got electricity in their village in Syria, Iraq, and we put. Of course, we put uh, Saddam in power so he could ravage the country only to hang him after he served his purpose and bombing the shit out of him. First thing America bombed um, in Desert Storm 91 and the the wars after in, in Baghdad, Iraq, they bombed the water treatment facility. They bombed the baby food factory. They bombed hospitals. Don't you ever think they did it? That's genocide. This isn't bombing an army. This is bombing a civilian population. 
and they're bombing America. It's just American civilians. It's just through other means, which are almost worse. Because a bomb, at least, you know, whoever didn't get hit is okay. The bombs that have gone off in America with the, the, the what was that shit, Oxycontin being prescribed to grandfathers, fathers, young people. You know, I, I had a grand, I had a grandpa, and all he did was sleep all day. Cause they're all fucking high. It's, it's so sad. I've seen so much sadness, and I don't mean to be so damn um, depressing all the time. Mix together Chicago's cold winters and the gray skies and COVID-19. And you got yourself a real, real rat race here where people are trying to survive. I know affluent people who own their own companies that I worked for that have been put out of business because of COVID. Where does that leave me? Without a job. Where does that leave them? Freaking out. Because they were... You know, the baby boomers, given all the privilege in the world, and they, they amassed a living uh, standard. The guy who, who I'm talking about was telling me how he gives his kids two daughters or something $3,000 a month in cash, spending money, and then I think he pays the rent on top of it. They're so spoiled, and he was so used to doing that, and now, you know, he's divorced, so they have their own issues with feeling bad about that. And this is a Jewish guy I know, and you know, he's used to having all that money and it affects him. Everybody is affected. What, what the fuck, man? School hasn't been in in quite some time. The teachers in Chicago don't want to go back to teaching? Of course not. They've got that union there that they don't want to do shit. Literally today in these cold, frigid weather, the teachers called the, the media, of course, had them show up and make a um, a news segment because I watch the news of teachers sitting outside in the cold and snow on an Apple or a Mac on their little MacBook with their little Starbucks sitting on makeshift table like tables and chairs outside the front doors of a school because they said it would be more safe for them to teach outside knowing nobody's going to let their kids go to school outside for 8 hours in January and February, March, Chicago. So basically, they're pretty much saying we want to work outside instead of inside because it's more dangerous inside, and we know you're not going to allow us to work inside. So basically, we don't want to go back to work, and they won't have to. They'll collect their money. All these people on unemployment. Now you got uh, Biden coming into office. In, in this kind of communistic environment, everybody's everybody's equally miserable. And you, you've been, we've been all feeling it for decades. It switched over in the early 2000s to where people wanted to help you, like when you went into like a gas station or business, to where now people want to tell you no and do whatever they can to make you leave the business. Like, no, we don't have that. Wait, it's right there. Oh, okay, sorry. I guess I got to go give you it. Like if Sam pointing to something behind the cash register. They'll tell you they don't have some shit that's right there in front of your face and you gotta look for it yourself. People are so unwilling to help each other. I gotta get this damn thing fixed. People are so unwilling to help each other. It's crazy. You know what I mean? The attitudes of people have changed over to a complete attitude of misery here on the south side of Chicago. And it was always pretty miserable, but now it's just... It's terrible. It's ugly. And then people with kids. You've got pregnant women out here right now in these horrible times. You know, everybody's scared. We we lost a really close loved one a couple months ago. It was devastating. You couldn't believe it. It was out of nowhere. It's just so so sudden. Sudden death. And uh, you start to really look around and say, wow, how did they let it get this bad? Oh, wait, it probably is purposely this bad. 
because for some reason we've been the in the academic situation here in America, they pretty much teach you that it's over the pop the population's too high, right? So don't have kids. Don't get married. Don't believe in God. Anything that they think is beneficial to your overall health and well-being and creating new healthy life and people, they tell you not to do. They want to open up all these pot uh, places because they know, and I'm not saying pot's a horrible drug, but I am saying that I lost a lot of my ambition as a young man because I would smoke a blunt and not want to go nowhere or do nothing. I don't want to do shit. It totally changes who you are and it changes your behavior. You go from hanging out with certain groups that don't do drugs to hanging out with just people who get high. And then you're in like some dingy ass person's bedroom, smoking weed, putting on a CD, there's no TV, and you're just like, my hell, bro. And you're hanging out with people that you weren't even hung out with a year ago. So they want everybody to do to smoke weed. Because it changes who you are. It retards your ambition. It slows down your drive. I mean, and it was illegal for all those years. So you had to like hide it or be paranoid in your car with it. And it criminalized you. So now you're a criminal. Going around selling and smoking weed, you know. Now you're a fucking criminal. And you got to behave as one in the underworld and it drags you down in it. You know, it's not a really heavy underworld with just pot smokers, but it can lead to people fucking using harder drugs and dying. How many kids have I known that are dead right now because they only smoked a little weed and it led to harder drugs, man? These are people's children. These are little angel babies that somebody loved with all their heart. And they're thrown into this toxic world. You gotta watch your kids. This is one hell of a fucking world we're living in right now, man. I mean, people are so miserable, they kill each other every day here. Somebody kills somebody else every day. Murder every day. In other towns, they don't have murders. Big cities, of course, all have murders, but it's like one every couple days. In Chicago, the wrong person gets killed every couple days, because motherfuckers wildly shoot and hit the wrong person. 16 year old girl just got it. But that's nothing out of the norm here. People are desensitized to it. They're so fucking desensitized to this ridiculous amount of violence. I mean, there's carjackings left and right. And I don't even really watch the news to, to know how much there is. But every time I do go on like the internet, there's like this little crime thing for the southwest part of Chicago. And it's like you know, where you drive every day, there's a carjacking. You didn't see one, but it happened. Usually it's late at night, and you're not out. I'm not out, thankfully. You know? So now everybody's getting fucking carjacked as we're driving down the street. We're getting shot. It's a fucking free-for-all. And with COVID, the police really stood back. They stood down. People were allowed to do whatever they want with masks on. Mind you, the mask... Do you know what kind of a, a, a feeling that is for a criminal? Somebody who does shit and is criminally oriented? Pre, you know, they have a predisposition to start shooting. You know how crazy it is for them to know they could wear a mask and not arouse any suspicion? You know, like it's normal now? You wear a ski mask. Nobody's going to even say anything. Perfectly normal. It's not going to arouse any suspicion. It's not going to make anybody um, notice them. And they get to they get to operate anonymously. I mean, not total anonymous, anonymousness because we've got cell phones tracking us and all that shit. But it's a big deal mentally for someone to put on a mask. Now they feel like they can behave differently. So, anyway, there's my little rant, man. Is it purpose... Is it purpose, uh, purpose on purpose genocide against white people, black people, and the only time they want to help a group of people is when it hurts another one? Like they don't want to help Mexicans. They just know that they could fucking 
get better slave labor and knock a bunch of whites and blacks out of the market. So they don't want to help anybody unless it's to hurt another group.